Hey everybody, this is Rhino and we're back to Shadowverse. So, I looked online and played a little bit more, trying to see if I could possibly defeat the main story, uh, Invasion of the World Reaver. What I saw as a comparison, as I saw someone else complaining about that they tried for 7 hours to defeat Chapter 11, uh, which in all fairness with the basic and the suggested decks only took me about 3 hours, which makes me feel good. Um, I'm now probably up to about 8 hours trying to defeat Chapter 12 here. Uh, but what they simply failed to make obvious, I think, the creators of this game, is that these chapters are the equivalent closer to Heroic Mode challenges in Hearthstone, which I personally never bothered to do any of their Heroic Mode challenges in the solo adventures in Hearthstone because they didn't give you any real reward so there was no reason to. These, this does give you reward um, and they are incredibly, incredibly difficult. From what I've seen, and this is just from another player of Shadowverse, you're only supposed to, as a new player, be able to beat 1-8, which is an incredibly, incredibly low point. Uh, and I don't know why 1-8 would have specifically been a point where they would have said said that, but yeah. W with the new cards, that's what I'm, I'm hearing. Oh. And maybe, maybe that's shifted a little bit to the point where a new player should be able to beat 115 or at the very least beat episode... Uh, one and two, which would also, well, also explain some things like perhaps I would have been a lot more frustrated with the game had I tried to actually defeat all of chapter three. Uh, moving on though, we're, we're done with the main story. There's no way I'm going to beat that at the moment. I did dip my toe into playing private matches, which you were supposed to play in total. 20 private matches without quitting. There is a Reddit that also connects to a Discord and a Steam group where people will private match and you can just pass or play people if you actually want to get the victories. And so I was able to get two people in about an hour. It's not as active of a thing as I would like it to be, frankly. Oh, I was able to get three. Uh, so, yeah, there's there, there's some gold, uh, kind of major amounts of gold there that you'll get from those achievements. I think it's 2,000 in total, which, heck, that's another 20 packs. And then there is a question, certainly, as far as just how far one really needs to go. Uh, winning 50 rank matches... It's still going to take a while, and doing some of these other things will, will definitely take it a while. Um, at a certain point, it becomes a question. Uh, each of the the difficulties and practices give you 200 gold. Uh, it does become a question about, is it worth it for me, having absolutely no idea when this latest expansion happened? to sit on more than 50 packs or should I think about like opening worlds uprooted and getting more cards because I probably don't have a lot of those cards I think you probably would want to skip Verdant Conflict and Rebirth of Glory um, I think you probably would be fine uh, getting Ultimate Coliseum but you probably would want to just work your way backwards um, that's probably a smarter idea than just sticking with buying Fortune's Hand and trying to get up to 400 to get to the tradables. Because if I ever do get to that that point, it's almost certainly going to be because I'm just rolling in gold. Which is apparently the situation I should be in um, going forward fairly easily. Okay. 
So we're just going to try default deck. Default forest craft. And then... I guess we check... Check... Arissa. Forest craft versus forest craft. And we'll start with beginner and see if it gets marked off. Um, this is straight up card gameplay. Like, so no more criticism on the story. This is a whole different experience. I also found out that to get the new four year anniversary characters, you actually have to use premium currency or get uh, tickets, which I don't think you're going to get all eight tickets. Uh, I don't think there's a way to earn eight tickets to get that to happen. Uh, so you are effectively left with using the old art with, that they really should have given to people for free as a four year anniversary celebration. Um, and this is the first time that they've redrawn the, the leaders. Whereas, again, I'd argue it wouldn't have really blown anybody's budget to to have planned to give a different outfit or, at the very least, make it look a little bit different uh, for every year. Even if it was just kind of like a palette swap. Hmm. <laughs> Not sure how far and how deep I want to go with this, too. Like, the, I guess the question is, do I want to play default decks? Am I only allowed to play default decks? Because that might be part of the problem, too. Um, well... This. I live by the this. sword. I live by the sword. And then this. You're done for. I mean, this is fairly brain. easy because because the they only have ten health. Oh come on! So I should be able to win here fairly easily. Let's play. And, but it still has the possibility of becoming fairly. Grindy too, and I guess the idea here would have been that you could have done some of the more difficult challenges in the main story, which I think the main story probably is the more difficult challenges, and then you would have jumped around here, um, and ensured a. Uh, all right. It won't be long now. I better That's get not gonna do anything. Iron my fair share. <laughs> Take that. Ow! That that was <laughs> some bad playing, but we'll still win. Ideally, we're looking for all of the practices to be fairly easy games. If not all, then the last two only being real challenges. Although there are a lot of levels of challenge here, and I could certainly see a concept here of the... I definitely could see the idea of of it getting very, very hard. It might also be a case that with every expansion, they they create a more difficult, unlimited deck for each of the opponents to play with, and that certainly could confuse the issue quite a bit. Like, if the beginner character is just playing a bunch of fairy cards that I recognize fairly, very easily, that's one thing. Hey, 
you still definitely see the tit for tat a strategy of this game that's very weird compared to most other collectible card games I've played where where they can just constantly trade minion for minion so I believe that's 200 gold right and 100 XP hmm okay hmm see still don't really have the right pre-built decks okay, we select this hmm No, I don't I don't think I wanna do this. You must die. I don't think I, I need to defeat myself. Arissa with each of the characters. So I think this is a waste of time, so we'll we'll just quit out of that. I should have foreseen this. And we'll make a mental note. Of how this is going see this is just daily missions which again I'm in a position where I'm not really any good point to to try to be doing anything but I just don't have time to sit around and wait for daily things to happen so what was the ring what was the thing here let's see scroll down Win five, take two matches. I should take it, play one of those. I forgot about them. Win five, open six matches. I should play those. That's what I should do at the gold more than, than opening packs. Okay. Defeat Erisa on elite difficulty practice. Elite, dif elite difficulty, elite difficulty, elite difficulty, elite difficulty, elite difficulty. Um... Elite Difficulty 2. Okay. Elite Difficulty 3. Battle 4 players and private matches. And then everything else we've already done. Ah, okay. So. That makes it a lot easier. Certainly. Let's see. What do, what do I really want to do? Let's just stick with Portal Craft. And Arissa, and then you, you should just skip down to Elite. Like, there, there's no reason to practice on any, any easier level since it's not going to give you a reward for defeating them on any previous level. Of course, I bring unto you this also means me I might very myself. well get my butt handed to me. And I still have yet to stick my toe in the idea of of finding what the current meta decks are and what to play there. But it's 20 versus 20. Hmm. Although, at least so far, she's just playing the kind of basic forest craft. Uh, stuff which is not anything particularly unique see let's go ahead and play that and attack The big difference here is that all uh, this looks like a new a newer card that I don't think I have. The the big difference here will come down to uh darn it. 
only way to solve this would be to do this and then do this and then let that one die which I guess is as good as we can go the forest is crying for why didn't that not die You're done for. Well, it, it dies at the opponent's in turn Yeah, this this could be one of those scenarios where Welcome to the city of hopes and dreams. Where you're just Again. gonna be outclassed by cards and, to the city of nightmares and, despair. and I might not be able to make any progress. Which might be just the way things are. I think that's all I can do. Yeah, Th this might be in practice. You might be able to play pre-built decks, so I need to double check that because that's going to drastically change your odds of winning. Because I, if I don't have the cards and can't use some pre-built decks and borrow the cards, then this is playing tough enough here that to the city I think I would dreams. probably not succeed. Welcome to the city of nightmares and despair. Here. What does this do? Puts a fairy in her hand. Over. Just constant fairies. Hmm. How much is in it for me? We're wearing down the cards pretty equally, but honestly, it would only take a small change. Because it's not activated, so I can't do really anything there. I could evolve that. I could play this with Ward. I could do this. And this. Let's have a look see. Iron my fair share! And this is going to do one damage every time you attack. Hmm. You Which means going? next time either one of these characters attack, I'm going to die. The hmm. Well, I said we were going to give it the college try. So at the very least, we'll try to defeat each of the leaders uh, at this level. Rush. And then Accept harmony. That's my last of all. And how do we want to do this? Cleansing mode. That the miasma can't prevail. Ah. He's wrecked me. Ooh, you're a big fella. I can do this. I can do this. I can't attack with this or this or they just die. By the way, I turned off the warning to confirm ending your turn. Uh, because when I was playing the private matches, I was just ending turns without playing at all. And I didn't want that extra warning. I'll probably turn it back on eventually. Hmm. Hmm. Like I have no defense here at all. They're gonna wreck my my play field. Meanwhile, they're gonna overwhelm me. How dare 
Yeah, I, I have I have him down to nine. I'm up to eighteen, and I'm and I'm really lost the game. Cause there's basically nothing I can do just because of that one rather strong defense, which might not be so much a strong defense if the game was designed a little bit differently. Hmm. Alright. So, let's go back home. Let's try this again. Let's see. So, you have your rotation pre built decks, you have your unlimited pre built decks, and then you have T Vault decks. Yeah. That's a nightmare. That is a nightmare scenario where you're pretty much going to have to either get really close or build custom decks to defeat these guys. There's no reason to practice before that. Uh, the practice clearly is designed to just be an AI to practice and test your deck against but that doesn't actually even make any sense because for multiplayer games it would be better to just promote the players to play unranked and I guess that does inherently explain why whenever I try to play unranked I'm still getting my butt handed to me it's because people are still trying to win even in unranked mode instead of just have fun or test out their decks because if you want to just have fun and test out your deck, you just should you just go to practice mode. It's it, it's an extra mode that's unnecessary. Um, I would argue one complaint you could make against Shadowverse is that it is overabundant in options and modes, whereas it had they not focus so much on the main story mode which really doesn't matter and not focused on a practice mode and and maybe not focused at all on a unranked mode and just had people always play ranked which i'm not sure people would be willing to live with that as a rule uh, if they had not focused on private matches to the point where you're rewarded for playing private matches um it's kind of ridiculous to have private matches and a practice mode uh, because usually those are combined as one concept. Maybe they didn't need to have a take two arena and a take six arena uh, concept on top of seasonal uh, monthly arena events and um, and other things that to get in the way of all that idea I'm losing my train of thought my blade is your salvation <laughs> i faith in my blade and my take that hmm. i've no regrets maybe I should have evolved the pegasus <laughs> on my blade hmm. victory and prosperity are it yours won't be long now um Blade, show your true power. Wait, that's it. I guess there is a big difference you could you could claim certainly uh, between just cosmetic additions like different skins and different card backs and and having a moderate focus around that idea. Uh, it all ends here. And then oh, gameplay well, mechanic additions in the fact that there are probably eight different ways you can play this game. Which I imagine does not help the 
the player base. Like, when people are just looking for a ranked game. Hmm. And I'm getting smacked around. Very good. I haven't seen this card before. It's definitely cards. Shining hope. Uh, yeah, there's definitely cards I have not seen and haven't seen other people play, which makes me assume that they're not particularly great cards, uh, but they were good cards two years ago or three years ago. My lord, this is not the end. Hmm. hmm. And you're not getting any XP from practicing. So this is not an effective use of your time, really. And I doubt I'm going to stumble on any of these that are actually good enough. And see, Elite 1 is just the classic cards set. It's not even any expansion. And Elite 2 is classic to Bahamut. Bahamut. And then Elite 3 is Wonderland to Brigade. Which means there's still like two expansions that, that are ready to be added to a third expansion for an Elite 4. So by the time the next expansion happens, if I'm good enough, which is a big if, there might be another 1600... Uh, gold to collect which wouldn't be bad hmm. Hmm. it does however feel kind of silly that you are given these default decks and you're Supposedly, in theory, you're supposed to get used to these cards and learn from these cards and 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 have kind of this nostalgia for your original deck that you've now you can kind of easily master. And four years into the game, what really happens is you have these default decks and they're not really worth anything at all. And so instead of benefiting from learning how like fighter works which is probably a terrible example because fighter is still probably in play quite a bit uh, a lot of other cards though may not be still used commonly in play I wouldn't be surprised if well destiny for instance is not used anymore um, and there is something better to, to replace it. Wait, that's it let's see two damage to a leader is vengeance activated no I think what's gonna happen here is I think I'm gonna call it a day after this recording. Like, I think that's where where this really needs to boil down to it. I think we're done with the pre-recorded uh, footage for Shadowverse, and it's all just gonna be about playing the game. I need to do some research and figure out if we are when the next expansion is coming out and I need to decide whether I want to open a bunch of packets right now or if I want to try and make a special video around it so let me just as I'm losing at this game type that in see. so here we go shadow burst next 
Expansion. Google search. Hmm. Get to work. See, I brought us to news. Ah, it's the first result. Hmm. Hey, I may actually win here. There's a changes to the cards on July 3rd. I'm recording this on August 10th. Hmm. The fourth birthday apparently happened on June 30th, so June was when it had. And then June 29th was Fortune's Hand. Apparently, yeah. June 28th was the last rotation. So it's June, July, August. There's not another expansion for a month. At least September. By my guess. Okay, how can we. What are we gonna do here? Three. Walt kill. This will protect. And then this will let you attack next turn. Kill that. And then the turn. So. Feels like it's this is gonna hurt a bit. <laughs> so, yeah. It looks like I should probably just spend all the gold. And it really will just come down to what cards are the best cards to spend the gold on at this point. Because I'm going to have a month to bin build back up to that. And so there are definitely things I shouldn't spend the gold on. That's for sure. Like I shouldn't shouldn't me? buy cosmetics with it. Let's see. Let's defile the battlefield. I love this. This. Shining and that. Unbelievable. And then on the turn. Revenge is all I desire. Hmm. This puts me in an awkward position. I'm, I'm succeeding when I'm not paying attention. Is that the secret to my success? <clears throat> so Urias's default deck, capable of defeating an elite one, oh, Isabel. And is that because I chose? I I was not actually playing her in elite. Nope, that was elite. So there's 200 rupees. So let's ride that victory. Urias's default deck against Isabel. And then 
Elite 2. We still are at a point, though, where it is just going to be a case of, of I'm going to have to build decks, I'm going to have to struggle, I'm going to have to grind a lot, um, I'm going to have to get, get to the point where I can get daily victories to get the temporary gems. And I really need to decide, do I want classic cards, which are, like, in Hearthstone it was my decision to get the classic cards as quickly as possible. I think getting classic cards is your best bet. You're guaranteed pretty much to always be able to play the classic cards. Although, in Hearthstone's case, they did pretty much start putting a lot of the classic cards in the Hall of Fame, which was just their made-up oh system God. to basically get rid of classic cards yeah over the course I would say of a year and a half they went from adding one or two classic cards that kind of maybe would have made sense to be left to be put in the Hall of Fame and taken out of play just and I, they that pretty much was out of every format of play except for wild play uh, and then it just kind of continued to expand and expand to the point where they were adding cards that didn't really have anything wrong with them, so there, there was no excuse, as it were. Hmm. I'm just getting warmed up! Now cleanse your unbelievable! You can see she's playing different cards now. Okay. Is the engine activated? I still don't feel like they're playing anywhere as difficult, though, as Belfomat, because that, that game in particular, I think, was pretty much just cheating. There we go. So we can play this, and we can play this, and I can evolve this since I'm since I sent all my evolves and didn't need them. Odds are fairly low that they're gonna be able to stop me, even if he kills both of these characters. This one has Storm. They'd have to heal themselves or deal 5 damage. But I have definitely seen plays like this where things just keep on going. And I guess if I didn't have something with Storm, I would have lost. This makes a bad argument for playing Bloodcraft versus Runecraft ever. That's, it's not a... It's not a good argument at all. But it is making a excellent argument that maybe you don't really need need to try too hard even to beat the elite level practices. 
Hmm. Prepare for defeat. I guess you're looking for a fight. There, there is a kind of problem with collectible card game challenges and, and video game challenges in general. I very rarely have to fight a boss or a, a specific conflict multiple times. So I very rarely need to plan anything out. The run and gun style of gameplay is the default style of gameplay for almost every kind of game with perhaps the exception of things like chess um, so because this is a collectible card game that doesn't really have that much variety of cards and, and there is obviously a small desire for you to kind of learn your opponent's cards in these practice modes and potentially uh, build a deck that counters the strategy of this character's cards uh, they're really failing to show you the cards which in practice mode that probably would be the best bet is just to to have it preview the opponent's deck or straight up just give the opponent's deck to you and make you win with a deck you're unfamiliar with uh, so I'm not really learning a lot uh, by playing the practice once and then getting lucky and winning. Um, and then you once again run into the issue of why would you come back and do the practice a second time. It's not going to give you a second 200 gold. I kind of wish it would, but that frankly would be asking a lot. I see to the ends of the world. And all they have to do is do a reasonable amount of damage to me and and I'll lose here. I can play this with a ward and then it will defeat me or I can play this with storm and it will defeat me I should have evolved this but it still wouldn't have done anything So I guess that is how Runecraft defeats uh, Bloodcraft, just by overwhelming him and lowering his health faster than he would want it to happen. And I feel like there should be a back button here, or bat instead of a battle again button. And it really doesn't make a lot of sense that you would want to go and battle a second time yeah let's just confirm this as we're down here yeah defeat isabel elite 2 on difficulty it's cleared it's never going to reset hmm remember when i started the game this limited time quest wasn't even a thing so let's just take a moment to, to take a break here you have main story, solo, quest, sometimes, practice. Then you get to multiplayer. You have unranked, ranked, and private matches. Then you have arena, which is challenges and tournaments and a ground prix sometimes. And then cards seem to always be decks and cards. And uh, shop always seems to be supplies, cards, and crystals. Although, in all fairness, each one of these takes you to a submenu. Um, there's just a lot of different menus here. Alright, next Shadowverse against Rowan. 
expert elite one We're actually like loading into games, so we're actually getting the loading screen. And they, they're using the flare of Elite uh, to show that it's Elite family. 1. I probably wasn't in a good position to start this recording, in all honesty. Uh, I streamed just a few hours ago for two and a half hours of Shadowverse and and now that I've been going for 45 minutes I, I am struck with being fairly exhausted and tired. Um, I could definitely use a vacation from the vacation of playing a playing a video games and play a different game. Summon a loot. Bane. Goliath. I earn my fair share. Hmm. I feel like one of these Necrocraft decks probably would be the one that would defeat Belfamat uh, in the main story. But it is also. I think one of the more difficult ways to play the game. I don't think it's super easy. Light upon the land. <laughs> Luminescence, shining hope. And I probably need to figure out when is the right time to evolve and when is the wrong time to evolve. I think once you have good cards, evolving gives a new ability to a character. And if you have bad cards, evolving just increases their attack or gives them the ability to attack earlier. Which is probably not as helpful as it should be. I live by the sword. See, like this evolve is Probably a worthless of all. Hmm. I've also noticed that if I right click a card, it kind of locks that card into be right clicked until it's my turn again, which is weird. Alright. And with that, I've lost. Like, you're too strong. <laughs> and in all fairness, I could probably go into some more logical patterns of thinking and and realize that Necrocraft versus Dragoncraft is likely to lose more often than it's likely to win. But. I don't want to get that technical. So let's just try it once for the remaining four leaders and call the day. In this case, I'll be playing the exact opposite scenario. Hmm. I'll be playing as Dragoncraft against a Necrocraft character. Or Shadowcraft char this uh, one's character. For my family. Which, really all this boils down to is I need to build more decks. And to build more decks I need more cards. So I need to go crazy. Of course, let me throw out this other idea in this other scenario for people who are testing out collectible card games. Um, not people like me. Not YouTubers that, that need something that they can kind of ignore when so that they can talk about video game news and and look at new games that have come out on Steam which is what I do every Monday, Wednesday and Friday 
but people that really just would want to play Shadowverse on their phone and, and actually just get into it and make it their lifestyle game, which collectible card games are lifestyle games, which is why they are niche games by nature. You're not going to convince the average gamer to make their lifestyle be built around playing any kind of collectible card game, whether it's Magic or Hearthstone or Shadowverse or anything else. Uh, so, knowing that, you then have to wonder if they've gone as far as I've gone. If they've earned as much as I've earned, which is a lot, but not everything that can be earned. Uh, roughly, let's say I've earned half the gold that's available to me. It's not going to be enough packs to get all the old packs or all the packs in rotation. Uh, so, yeah, it does kind of open a question as to how does this will I potentially lose interest in the game now that I'm about to spend all the gold because that's how they design these free to play games to be is that the, the real value the real gameplay the real satisfaction comes from opening packs if I open all the ones I'm gonna get for free and I know I'm gonna stay as a free-to-play player and not uh, not spend money to buy more packs like there's two ways this goes either you get pulled into the to the pay pay lifestyle which is what they're hoping or you realize that there's kind of not anything more to do uh, as a person who wants to seriously stay as a free-to-play character uh, free-to-play player together once again. Time to say goodbye. so you do have the possibility of it being fairly disappointing like it is the Christmas presents wrapped under the Christmas tree feeling before versus the Christmas presents being open uh, and now you know what you've gotten and the excitement and the possibility of it being anything has has been eliminated hmm. I definitely remember there were some Christmases when I was a kid that that I was not as th thrilled with what I had gotten as as thrilled as I was with the possibility of what I might have gotten um, and I imagine that's fairly common. Guardian of the sky. If it isn't, then it's that would just be, I guess, a case of me getting some really crappy Christmas presents. Perhaps deservedly so. <laughs> hmm. Your death will make me stronger. You intend to bury me. Of course, also in all fairness, uh, one does not become a video game critic without also having access to a lot of video games so I was gifted more than my fair share of video games me and burn. Hmm. Decree will abide. Well, I occasionally got a pair of socks and boring things like that practical things things no kid wants as a gift Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna win here. I won't stop. Yes, run away. <laughs> You're a solid fighter. I'm just outplayed, clearly. Twenty to zero. I suppose it is a good point to mention that 
had this game never had a, sil a sil solo section that rewarded you, I would have never made a solo version of coverage of Shadowverse. And it probably would have been better off that way. Because then I don't really feel the need to kind of point out and justify that uh, I've not played the game enough. Clearly, I've probably played less than 100 matches. Um, and even against these elite practice characters, they, they are beating me fairly easily when if I had built the decks, if I had played the game, if I had spent the last 35 hours uh, of gameplay playing just multiplayer unranked or just playing ranked to try and get up higher in rank, uh, I would be learning a lot more. And of course that's fairly boring stuff too. It's it's practically impossible to criticize a game while you're interacting with another human because the other human could easily be affecting your experience by quite a lot. This looks like this is one of the spell boost decks versus a vampire bat deck. Which these can be a mess. Of course, he'll help me for a while. So, this really just comes down to when do you turn the tables on him and do a little bit more damage than he was expecting. Isabel against Urias is. Should be the exact opposite of what we did before, and we won fairly easily against Isabel with your eyes. So it should be fairly hard to win now. Hmm. How much is in it for me? Let's see. The one thing I need to figure out, though, is are classic cards allowed in rotation, or are classic cards only in unlimited? Because if they're only in Unlimited, then I shouldn't bother to open Classic Cards, because that changes the calculation quite a bit. Well, that was something. I'm not sure exactly what it was, but it was something. Damage to all followers. This one can do three damage, this one can do six damage. I live by the sword. Let's go ahead and just evolve somebody and attack. If he has yet a third card that does 8 damage to all followers, I'd be shocked. But clearly he has something. Weakness the power. So he's at 3, I'm at 6. Hmm. Let's see. This can do three to that, which is fine. Which this can then do two snowmen, which is fine. So if he.
doesn't kill me in this turn or put up a ward, I might be able to win. Might be the keyword there. Might. Hmm. Can destroy that. My beauty This match is mine. And that's one of those examples where I'd like to be able to go back and look at the log. And I think you can do that. That's an, it's nice that that's an option. Okay, we lost there. <laughs> we're probably going to lose everywhere. Let's see, where were we next? This one. Against Eris. Elite. One thing I think a lot of these these games could do is they could easily just have a ginger flipped version of each leader uh, if they're going to have so many different varieties of heroes. One that looks pretty much exactly the same is just it's a male version versus a female version. I know there isn't a lot of people that that are upset with playing probably collectible card games as a different gendered person, but there might be a few out there and it would put some variety out there. Interesting. But make it a little bit more interesting. I definitely feel like though, if I was to continue to try and make episodes like this, it would boil down to me being almost completely silent having nothing to say whatsoever. I don't even know if I'm really even being hypercritical at the moment of what's what's going on. Um, there's really not a lot to say here other than, yeah, at the fourth tier of difficulty, you can't beat the, the people on practice mode with the default things. Allied officer. Okay. Raise your blade. Come get this. Some. Nothing scary with allies by your side. <laughs> Excuse me if you can hear me chewing ice. Um That there is something also to be said about at one point, at some points, I have been fairly hopeful and ambitious that playing collectible card games would be a good use of my time as a way of a downtime activity to, to, to just do something when I'm bored and need to rest my voice or just for one reason or another can't r record other kinds of footage uh, that downtime has never really existed unfortunately uh, over the course of my entire career um, and if there was any opportunity for that downtime to really exist it's almost certainly taken up by me playing other games on my cell phone or uh, by by me listening to podcasts or watching YouTube videos and and or yeah or watching TV or watching Netflix like there, there's just several other non-video game activities passive activities that have taken up any of that kind of free time uh, I'm still playing the Korean game Destiny Child that's a gotcha game with 
a bunch of lewd waifus in it and it's still treating me very nice considering I'm a completely free to play player on that and so that takes up a significant amount of time um, unfortunately with my insomnia the that would probably be the game I would play right before I wound down and fell asleep, but it doesn't really work that way. It's like, I can play it at night all I want, it's just not going to actually make me fall asleep any faster or, or be sleep any better or be any more mentally tired. Can you dodge this? Can you dodge this? And on occasion, I try a couple other cell phone games to see if the state of cell phone games on Android have improved by any amount, and they really haven't. Um, my allies, my friendly day for a fight. Well, let's see. I could have potentially won if I had knocked her three, three da more damage. An exemplary battle. Coulda, shoulda, woulda. It, it's all just talk until it actually happens all right one last game and then then we're done with the solo stuff go back to default forest craft which means maybe I didn't play as one of these characters hmm but I think I did forest craft against Yuan which you can see that Yuan because he was added later, his elite starts at Chronogenesis, and he only has an elite 2 of Chronogenesis 2 Brigade, which means that there's potentially a new elite challenge that will unlock at some point. I definitely could tell that Yuan's story was added later um, because it, it was written way better than the other characters stories unfortunately the story still is not written well enough and I don't know what you do with it you, you're gonna have to just live with it maybe you could do some kind of soft reboot and reset everything. Um, set everything to wrap up and then start a new story that's like five years later. That would solve a lot of you problems. You could have Arissa, regardless of what age she actually is as an elf, you could have her act more mature and less naive. And you could have Luna grow up a little bit while still putting her uh, in the younger side. You could get rid of some of Urias's kind of pointless desire for battle and Rowan's kind of pointless uh, agonizing, self-agonizing. You also could get rid of a lot of the secondary characters, which might clean up the story a little bit. Hey, let's play. Now, I think my odds of beating you on with a forest crack craft deck is pretty much none. Like, I, I just don't think that's going to happen. I think I'm going to quickly have my behind handed to me. 
And then that'll be it. But I can say that it doesn't feel like any of these challenges are particularly scripted or cheaty. Unlike the temporary quest Code Geass ones, which were scripted. And the Belfamat challenge, which was scripted and cheaty, frankly. So, this does seem very doable. This does seem like if I was just going to bang my head against the wall, I probably could accomplish what I would seek out to accomplish and, and get at least Elite 1 defeated for each of the 8 characters. Oh, come on. Oh. There just is kind of no, no reason to bother to put, put that footage on the screen. Like, frankly it would become a mess where I'd potentially have to record snippets and then toss snippets and then record the next game and then toss the game every time I lost and, and do a whole lot of editing to kind of hide the massive amount of struggle that happens here that would happen I guess tournament winning decks might be something to look at Let's see we never actually looked at that okay so we have a forest craft tournament wearing um, like tournament winning deck here if I clicked on this, see what cards am I missing? Ha ha ha! Vials needed ten times as many vials as I have, probably ever would have. Yeah, look at this. This this just goes to show it. Uh, let's just click on all of these and <laughs> what a better. What a wonderful way to just show how screwed I've been <laughs> this whole time. Then to show that, yeah, you can't win at all with the cards you start with. And that's not incredibly uncommon. But it is, it is often hidden better than this. Yeah. And so Forest Craft, I have none of the cards. Let's just look at the top one. Uh, Sword Craft, I have none of the cards. Rune Craft, I'm missing most of the cards. Dragon Craft, I'm missing half of the cards. Shadow Craft, missing half the cards. And I think it's probably worth mentioning a lot of these cards are probably legendary cards so then not easy to replace with um, shit bloodcraft missing half of them even craft I only have four of the cards needed 10% of the deck then portal craft I only have six of the 40 cards needed and I guess maybe if you wanted to scroll back down to like Tempest Dawnbreak maybe at that point you might have a chance of finding a deck considering how these are the only decks that that they would they're pointing out to you and you'd have to go to like an online service to get a copy of other decks that would be recommended and basically what you're looking for is what they call popper decks things that you can get very cheaply or make with the basic cards and that's in rotation it would only get more difficult if we put it in unlimited and let's see roll this back to the most recent expansion uh, most recent expansion doesn't even have unlimited. Oh. Okay. So if I was going to make a rotation deck, new deck, new, for 
for, let's say, Forcecraft. If I come over here, it's Basic Glory Verdant Coliseum Uprooted in Fortune. It's not Classic. So Classic cards don't matter. Okay. So if we go over to the shop, let's see. I definitely wouldn't want to spend any gold buying some of the characters, which some of the characters you can buy, but I, I'd have to be rolling in cash to really want to do that. Or I'd have to have fans that wanted to just give me like Steam credit to spend the money on premium things like that, and I, I don't think that's a viable or smart thing to do, frankly. So buy cards, pre-built decks, on the other hand, have to be built with premium currency. Even the oldest of the oldest of pre-built decks require premium old currency. Plus this also here, this one time cost of 500 would give you classic cards and darkness evolved cards, which not any of those cards I think would be very useful um, frankly yeah some of these I think you already have some of these are not playable anymore so while this might be a fairly good deck to get you ancient elf and some silvers and some golds it's actually probably not the right way to even do things um, anymore the most recent one would be to buy something like this and even in this case it's getting you a couple of cards but it's, I don't even think giving you animated versions of the cards so I I actually think the pre-built decks are um, pretty bad. They do have bonuses uh, though, so if you buy them you'll get some bonus cards and some sleeves and some emblems and if you buy all eight you'll get a seer stone or two. Is that the same bonus for... it's basically the same bonus schedule an animated card here and here hmm. so yeah I don't think the pre-built decks are the right way to go either I think the right move is to try and get the temporary cards that are available to you with the temporary gems which I don't know at what point I got 6690 temporary gems that seems like way more than I had f before. So, uh, but I'd, I'd really have to think about what card do I want or do I need? And did I get temporary gems possibly because I had some temporary cards that I turned into real world cards? Okay. So... Here we go. If we opened 50 packs right now, that would be 56 on top of this. That'd only get you to 100 out of 400. I don't think that that's the right move. I think we open these four packs with the tickets. And that'll still probably leave me with the capability of opening one pack every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Because you basically get a new pack every time. Odds are low that any of these cards are going to be new. Um, just looking at this. Yeah, none of these cards are new. Hmm. Are any of these cards new? 
Pure Song Priest might be new. Or this might be like the second copy we've had of this. But everything else is old. Now, nothing new here. Unless I didn't have any lumber and carapies. But I think I probably did. And if I didn't, I have two now. Now we have an animated desert dragon impact. That's probably new. Probably had some other dragon impacts, but not animated. So yeah, that's not super rewarding. So then the next thought certainly would be to look at our cards and look at what we're missing for walled uprooted and and do a quick comparison. So fortune and create cards what are we missing on the fortune cards? Not a lot. We have eight pages. We're missing this, which would cost almost all of our vials because it's a legendary. And then this one. And then that one. Then we start as we get up to the four cost cards running into more and more that we don't have hmm. now let's compare that what we just looked to uprooted in uprooted's case we are missing considerably more cards so How would we want to play this? See, ideally, I'd like to kind of liquefy all the extras. We've been sitting on this. Let's do this. No fanfare for that. I'm surprised. I would have expected more fanfare. Uh, but, okay. So, when that takes us back to fortune... Let's double check. Now that we're, we're still on eight pages, but everything is down to like three copies. Hmm. Okay. So then the, the next thought would be, do we want to get Coliseum and Verdant also? How many Coliseum cards are we missing? Decent amount. And Verdant cards. We probably want to skip Glory. Um, actually, I think... No, I think we could do Verdant too. Hmm. Wait a minute. This doesn't make sense. Oh, because fortune is still highlighted. Alright, let's look at this again. Is there enough verdant cards missing to justify buying verdant packs? I think there is. Okay. And see, now you run into the problem of just efficiency. How, how do I want to do this versus how should I do this? I think the best way to do this is to simply go 10 packs here with a thousand rupees and hope that this is just going to be my lucky day in these card pack boxes. Kind of make more sense now that we've done most of the story. And those all sound like 
potentially good cards. But in all honesty, I think pretty much everything is new, which is going to be helpful. Either these are new artwork on old cards, or because there might have been something else called Blind Justice, or these are just straight up new cards. And I think with every expansion, it's just straight up new cards, which is great because then you don't have a situation like Magic the Gathering where they ban cards and then they create 2-2 two -two bears, uh, which is what they're typically described as, like a 2 mana, 2 attack, 2 health. Originally it was a bear, but sometimes they turn it into like a deer or something else, but it doesn't matter because it's the same card with the same abilities and it just has a different name and different art and they're just selling you the same thing over and over again. I don't think Shadowverse is doing that. I think we can rest fairly assured that if we're seeing something here, it is something, a card that does something Where's different. The balls just don't cut it anymore. Also, all of these are translated into English, and I've seen some of these cards played. I've seen a lot of these cards not played, which makes me wonder what the odds of a card being useful is. And you still kind of run into the problem where I really would like more of the backstory to something like Plucky Treasure Hunter. I wish she had shown up in in the main story just to even give you a 10 minute or 5 minute experience, uh, uh, story. Uh, but yeah. And then you also have the problem where sometimes these drawings look very, very different. Like you have a very masculine Western animation style if it's a guy or a robot. And then you have clearly a different animator who's drawing all the anime waifus. Uh, I guess that's a, a good card. Not actually reading what any of these do. I think I'll have to just build decks after the point. Uh, major prayers with Eris, which kind of the problem now is that they've changed the way Eris looks. They got rid of the ridiculous crown and they changed their staff to be less of a morning star shape with angels on it. Um, so now these card arts are going to be a little bit off, but not terrible. It's not, not a big issue. Here we have an animated card. Here we have another animated card. Hmm. I guess we are looking for big fanfare. And we got it. So, I think we had that one already. Daria Infinity Witch. A runecraft card that I think you probably want. And we're starting to see some duplicates. Here we have a dancing ghost. Let's see. I kind of wish... There was a different way this was depicted. Um, like, what I would like is for them to fan out these cards in a giant format to the point where they are taking up the full length of the screen. And then you s swipe one to the left and it lines up and it shows you a full image not too different from this but take take this image perhaps don't even bother to show the card elements so much but put it all the way to this point and then these buttons here could easily be at the bottom or they could appear when you hover over the card or something like that and then you would just 
swipe the card, the next card to the left to look at the next card. Um, basically a Tinder idea. Right. Yeah, they, they should integrate something like that. A swipe left and a swipe right on card pack openings. But make it a big deal. Make it pretty. Don't make me have to click on each one of these to look at the art and still not really have the art as big as it should be. Which they do have the ability to see the art as big as it should be. But frankly I'd have to program like a macro to, to click in this spot, then click in this spot, wait a few seconds, click in this spot, click there, and then continue down the round rounds doing that to show off everything and I could certainly do that but it's not worth anyone's time when I really would just like a fancy little slideshow yeah for all the PowerPoint slideshow technologies that have been created I'm surprised card games haven't created more fanfare so I think we had a copy of this already Vibra Chakram Thrower uh, Chakram's not particularly great weapons uh, they're f cool looking but they don't they don't stand up very well or cut very deeply and they you, they're a throwing weapons so that they they violate two concepts in a, in a weapon that should be thrown. They are not easy to create, nor are they easy to lose uh, because they're not cheap, nor are they easy uh, to build, to weld or forge. Um, whereas if you make a arrow, arrows are relatively cheap to make. You can lose dozens of them or if you're making throwing knives those tend not to be high quality fancy knives or spears or j even bolos i don't think i've seen this card before hmm. there is something to be said about some perhaps awkward angle to have an arch fiend hold his flaming sword there a little phallic reference perhaps here we have Amelia the silver flash who once again would the silver of my sword shines above the battlefield I, I have there's no main story though that that talks about her so you don't really know the the what's going on there there's another 11 character so at this rate, I should get perhaps a card sleeve or three and, and three or four emblems. Let's see here, we have an animated gold card, a animated silver card, an animated uh, bronze card, this and that. We have three of those now. Here we have Vice Death Grip. Hmm. As a Machina card. Having Machina cards is probably a good idea. Hmm. So we're getting fairly good draws there. Now that was kind of a bad pack. But they can't all be lucky. Although it would be nice if they were. At a certain point I kind of would like to to just have a game that lies to you and pretends like it's a free to play game but it's actually so rigged in your favor that every pack you get is exactly the cards you need you never actually spend any money uh, you can't actually spend any money uh, and it's just giving you that experience in the way that I enjoy playing virtual poker games but I wouldn't want to play online gambling poker like I enjoy potentially 
experiencing that shared experience without taking on the risk. Hmm. There seems to be a small subclass of insects, uh, but they're machina machine insects, which would tie into the main story. Uh, I don't know how far you could really go to like have a full insect deck. I don't know if there's any reason why you would have a full insect deck. Another quiet pack opening. I kind of feel like your odds start dropping once you've accomplished a few of the great ones. So we got two emblems from that. And that was world uprooted. So let's just start with extras. We had five plus five extra silver and 17 bronze, which we can just go ahead and live liquefy. And then let's see what uprooted looks like now. Hmm. There's a lot of cards that we only kind of have one of, but that did take a step towards filling in the blanks. Hmm. Yeah. And well, let me go back to the shop and think about this. I don't think there's any reason to believe the progress here towards tradables goes away. Because there's progress here for these cards, too. It, it feels like there needs to be a third currency, or they just need to straight up give you uh, packs for the classic card packs. Because like, there, there's no reason why you'd ever spend gold to get the classic card packs and play those cards. Uh, and... Yeah, if there was a third currency where every day you logged in you got a hundred silver and then the silver could be used in uh, non-rotation expansions, that would be great because it would also mean that any progress for like these 15 packs that have been opened would not be lost and you could continue to make progress towards that. But yeah, it would be incredibly boring to to open more of that. And there's a decent argument to open more of these. But I think we'll just stick with my original plan. And try and speed this up a little bit. And I guess that whole tournament arc was a limited time quest, so I don't think I'm going to be able to engage in that experience. Hmm. And are we just going to get quiet openings? I'm not going to look at the cards unless I get something fancy, because we're getting down to the point where these are cards I've kind of seen before. So we got an animated gold, a pudding pol poltergeist. Interesting that this is in Japanese. Are, are they all in Japanese? Well, I don't know what I was thinking there. Um, come on, quick draw maven. This will be over in the blink of an eye. So, apparently only some of them are in Japanese and haven't been translated. I kind of feel like they just kind of dropped the ball on translating some things. Deal one damage to your leader. Bloodcraft. I, I desperately wanted the main story to go to a vampire world. 
I think that would be a much more interesting story <laughs> by far. Uh, for as much as Urias is just obsessed about finding his opponents, if you enter a vampire world and there was a bunch of vampires stronger than him that wanted to fight him, uh, or nobody wanted to fight him, in it, um, or he didn't want to fight them for some reason, that'd be interesting. Let's see. Uh, the way the vampires are typically depicted is kind of succubus like creatures i would imagine if you were gonna tell a story of your eyes going to a vampire world the vampire world would probably be designed around a bunch of uh succubuses who would be trying to uh, trying to suck the life out of them and and like sleep with them and he it would be a funny twist if he can't handle romance for all his bravado and manly uh, actions and that he can't actually handle romantic advances because all he's ever done in his life is think about fighting. Here we have a courtly dance. Yeah, that would be a like comedic episode to an anime, not something you would tell a long story around, but something that could break the tension and certainly they could have done that in the main story at any point is they could have had them have to jump between five or six different worlds before they got back onto the path of the next world that was actually under attack by Nerva or Nexus or a keeper in general yeah, getting gold cards gets you the fanfare but if it's not a uh, legendary card then you don't get a reward and then I guess if it's a animated card like this this one's very subtly animated but it has a gold title above it and I guess I'll have to keep an eye out to see if that's always the case Yeah, that was sort of pathetic. But once again, two more emblems. Let's see. So where does that put us with Coliseum? Let's go ahead and just liquefy for another 420 uh, vials. 44 silver, 4 silver, 22 bronze. I was doing some weird math there in my head. So. Yeah. Definitely are making progress. And this is the thing you kind of would have needed. Too. Like, you can't really build a deck and try out a deck if you don't have the cards in the first place and the pre-built decks can only get you so far in that concept hmm. okay and that leaves just verdant conflict because i don't want to do rebirth of glory which will also leave me with 2690, which should be more than enough to potentially do a pick six experience. Um, which I guess I should also double check and see where the pick six pulls its card from, what card pull that is. Um, but yeah, I should be doing the pick six drafts going forward. Even if that's not getting me any kind of mileage towards the 400 tradables. So here we have Balto Malice Deflector. Yeah. 
yeah you do kind of run into this problem though where it, it stops being it stops really mattering like if i only had a hundred gold and i had only opened one pack you know i would have tried really hard to stretch it out and and appreciate that those eight cards in that pack but when i'm opening 10 packs it's fairly easy to ignore them awakened ragna which is a legendary card legendary spell i'm not sure there's much of a balance difference between a spell and a creature if anything i probably would guess that there's actually a fairly decent um, bias towards creatures versus spells and artifacts like the artifacts tend to seem to be fairly weak with the single exception that they are fairly hard to, to be destroyed by your opponent um, but then their cooldowns tend to be sometimes a little longer than you might like them to be spells tend to always activate but they don't tend to synergize or do anything amazing out of uh out of like what you would expect one little jab and they spill all their secrets this is pine holy police she she looks like she's a Nurse with a giant needle, but they're calling her a police person. A shot of medicine that will make you want to confess your sins and apologize, huh? Where are you going? Whoops, I gave you the medicine that makes you want to work up a sweat and burn some calories. Okay. Hmm. Nothing there. I am definitely having some deja vu with some of these cards, and I don't know if that means I already had, like, Ine's Maiden of the Clouds, or if I've just played the pre-built deck that has Ine's Maiden of the Clouds uh, so often that I know her. I could never set foot in the sun. Hmm. She has a kind of nice feature. If you can get three of them on the field... They'll deal one damage to all enemies whenever resonance becomes activated. So you synergize this with some of the cards that uh, put cards back into your deck and thus activate um, resonance multiple times a turn. Um, don't think I've seen this card before. Interesting. It may very well be a case that there are quite a lot of cards that I just haven't seen um, so my my concern mostly would be to get mileage towards the trade to the tradables so if I was to go over here and not this challenge open six the draw rates opens the web page um, The question here, let's see, five packs from the four latest sets. In Open 6, you build a deck of 30 plus cards using the cards you've obtained from opened, the open card packs. If you're, you are able to keep all of the cards except the phantom cards, you also get a phantom card back. Um, so yeah. The question, I guess, then comes down to, does that give you mileage towards the uh, packs being open? And I think the answer probably would be true. You only get cards from the class you selected, uh, plus neutral cards from each card pack. The cards displayed on the class selection screen are guaranteed to be included in the Phantom Pack. Oh, okay. That makes some things a little bit different. The more matches you win, the better your rewards will be. If you win four matches or more, you'll be able to keep one of the Phantom cards. Alright. 
that does kind of confuse the issue a little bit because what it would what that boils it down to let's see what we need to liquefy we had 10 silver and 25 bronze to liquefy some more um, and let's see where that what that did for verdant as far as having a collection definitely have are in a better position now yeah definitely in a better position okay but the thing here is we'd have to go rotation well not actually rotation you'd have to go this 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 and this and then what you'd have to do is say show me all the forest craft cards that you don't have um, and then you'd have to make a general judgment on how many forest craft cards you're missing and then show me the like sword craft cards you're missing and decide if you're missing more sword craft than forest craft and you'd kind of have to make an internal listing here for each of the characters class before you went and did the pick six so that you could know which class to pick and odds are going to be that whatever class you choose there's not going to be a huge difference so it may not really matter until you get later into the game of opening more packs but you could also really mess yourself up by opening uh, six packs that always give you forest craft cards you could have a complete collection of forest craft cards that way and that's fine if you only want to play forest craft cards it's terrible if you ever want to play anything else and the daily missions and all of that would probably indicate that you need to play some other cards from other sets you can kind of see by my current ranking that I still have some some effort I need to put into to getting victories in general well let's see where this ends up leaving us as far as flares there's still a ton of flares to earn there's still a ton of solo mission stuff to be done as far as emblems I think it's fair to say that there's probably close to 40 or 50 emblems because as you get more cards you will just get more emblems not that they really matter or mean anything at all uh, I think I'll probably just stick with the Shadowverse emblem which the Shadowverse Morningstar emblem means nothing to you flags never changed you, they were always available as far as that um, as far as leaders I don't think I unlocked any new leaders anytime soon but over the course of doing through the going through the single player and streaming I have gotten all of my characters up to around 30 of 150 which is something I did use a ticket to get this Isabel character I don't really regret that um, and something rewarded me with a different character here and something rewarded me with a different character here so there probably is enough rewards out there to get maybe one extra skin hmm. what there was something else I wanted to mention before we wrap up here something I found in the shop that I think was kind of sneakily hidden I wanted to show it off like I know that there was 
something somewhere that they added. Let's see. Yeah, these, I guess, was what I was going to mention. Is these were only available in the NetEase version, which would have been the Chinese version of the game. So I could spend 800 rupees on that. Sure. That's silly to do. Um, but then that gives you some different appearances. I wouldn't want to spend 2800 on these at the moment though. But at some point I probably should and will. Just for silliness sake. Um, and then the only items they have are this. Where 5,000 one time only Sears globe. Sure. Why not? Actually, that seems like a really stupid move, but hey, let's be stupid. So next time I want a, a Sears globe, I would either need globe shards, which I have not seen globe shards anywhere, so I don't know where you get those from. Or, uh, which apparently you can get like five per month, or I'd need 30,000 vials, which if I spent 300,000 vials, I could get 10 Sears globe that way. Where do you get globe shards from? There's a whole premium currency that's just hidden. So yeah, once again, it, it leaves you in that unique position where... If you're going to stay as a free to player and you've spent most of the gold, now do you lose your enthusiasm because there's nothing new to look forward to? Or do you take your new cards? Do you build new decks? Do you attack all of the solo missions that need to be done? And do you keep on playing multiplayer? Do you get those daily quests to get 400 temporary gems? Do you start crafting temporary gems? Do you go against all these achievements? Try. There's still a decent amount of achievements to get things. Um, but once all of these achievements are gone, they're gone for good. And then you're just playing ranked, trying to get your score reward up. And the score rewards aren't amazing things, really. Maybe you get a massive amount of vials if you can get to high high level ranked and a massive amount of gold now you really don't get that much gold even even if it is 50 then another 50 then another 50 um, legendary card pack tickets are really the, the big reward there and it doesn't seem like you ever get anything in your crate like after the, after that initial setup so I don't, I don't know why the crate button stays around and doesn't just disappear uh, I don't know why the info button isn't hidden behind the more button so yeah that's that's the single player experience for Shadowverse we've been going for two hours uh, a lot of grinding I expect to put in potentially 60 to 100 hours of solo stuff and grinding and card pack opening which is to be expected in a collectible card game and a lot of multiplayer stuff it is a lifestyle game you do have to commit to it it still does not feel as greedy by any means as greedy as magic the gathering arena it does not in any way feel as empty and overly simplistic as hearthstone which has always been the criticism of hearthstone in all fairness, I still am also thinking about getting in on the beta and playing the second dinner uh, game that is in development, uh, which is going to be a Marvel collectible card game by Ben Brode, the person who made Hearthstone originally. Uh, and so I imagine 
with the Marvel licenses, there is a high chance that that will be super popular and succeed better than any previous collectible card game uh, or most previous collectible card games. Uh, so I'm still thinking I will get in, in on the ground floor with that and try to have all the cards on that. And at that point, I probably won't put any more attention into Shadowverse unless the Marvel card game just comes out and turns out to be too simplistic or have some other problem with it. But there, there's not a lot to say negative about Shadowverse. The only thing I can really say is they should have hired better writers. They should have had a more consistent artist. And they should have warned me to not try to beat the final boss battle with the default decks. They should have either let me skip those battles like they let me skip all the other battles just to see the story. Or they should have told me these are super difficult things. If there had been a warning at the beginning of episode 9 that said these are really difficult challenges, you may struggle, I would have been fine with that. But they didn't give me any, uh, like, warning at all. So it left me spending five hours trying to beat a boss that I almost certainly had no chance of ever beating. Anyways, that's going to be it for this recording. Uh, you can continue my adventures of playing Shadowverse for as long as I play it, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, live streaming on my channel. Of course, I'll be talking about video game news and uh, and events and games that have come out on Steam over the course of the week while playing the card game. So I won't be paying a ton of attention to the, to the card game while I'm doing that. Uh, but that's how I plan on playing the game going forward. If you made it this far, I want to give an extra special thank you for for putting in all the effort. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment, and watch every second of my videos because that helps me with YouTube, allegedly. Who knows what helps you with YouTube these days. I also have a playlist tab on my YouTube channel for every game I've ever covered. Plenty of pre-recorded games, plenty of non-collectible card games, too. Please go check those out. Uh, there's a playlist for every game individually. Um, and then if you want to follow me on any social media sites, there's a bunch of links down below to get backup notifications for when my videos are out. And if you want to support me further, there's a link to Patreon. Or you can friend me on Steam and get me a gift card or a game off my wish list. Since Shadowverse is on Steam, you can also friend me on steam and that will probably integrate into shadowverse's friends list also if you want to play me on shadowverse which we may do a little bit of that uh, but probably not a ton of it thank you for watching have a good evening